blue there. Um, some of you may remember this tractor from previous videos on YouTube that we've made. Uh, most noticeably was starting it up when it tried to ruin my head with the crank handle. As you can see it looks a bit different to what it did back then. Yeah, there's a lot less of it here at the moment. And it's because I actually secured a slightly older one a couple of weeks ago at the Rob Denny's clearing sale in Cranbrook, Western Australia. <coughs> now, a few people who know the history of this tractor know that it's actually the oldest Massey Harris Wallace that's in existence. So for all intents and purposes it might as well be number one after Massey Harris bought a Playworks, a case Playworks. The other one's a Playworks tractor, so it's slightly older, but the thing with the other one is it's in far better mechanical condition. This one, unfortunately, was exposed to the elements and its timing gears are worn on it. Um, you know, the radiator's completely shot. Someone's modified all this pulley, welded these pulleys on where it should just be a big flat belt and things like that. It took me quite a lot of work to get this tractor running, which I did, as you've seen, but it was never going to run, you know, be able to pull a flower. Which, uh, which of the wheels fell off? Oh, the front, um, front passenger side, or driver side, if you're in America watching, this wheel fell off when we were going around the parade at our local show. <coughs> and again, you know, it's had a Massey Harris 25 front axle bodged underneath it, and you know, it's just, yeah. So what I'm currently doing is I'm stripping it down for parts to use in the other Wallace and to retain because hopefully one day I'll find another Massey Harris Wallace and I'll rebuild this one again. <coughs> um, <coughs> so I thought whilst I've got it apart and everything's quite visible I'd show you some of the features of the Wallace tractor because for that age they're actually an incredibly advanced tractor. Companies like International Harvester and um, Hart Power and uh, Hoover, Huber and a few others were still building open framed two cylinder, um, you know, exposed gears, uh, drip, chain driven tractors when these tractors were first being built. <coughs> So I suppose the first thing to start with is the engine block, which is an inline four. It's got a hybrid pressure um, a splash lubrication system. If I just find my torch, I can show you inside there. The, um, <coughs> the way the system works is you have an oil pump, which is mounted externally on the tractor, which then pumps the oil up and runs the oil down into these trays, which the big ends on the pistons then pick the oil up and throw it round inside. Uh, a lot of tractors that they were building at this time still had mechanical lubricators and complete lost systems, whereby the oil would just run out onto the floor. <laughs> the other thing is, it, all the working parts are enclosed. So you've got this big bathtub frame, and all the bottom ends are in there, and the gearbox is in there, and the diff is in its own casting. But everything is, in theory, protected from dirt. Now, Henry Ford was also doing that at the time with the little Ford Snap. But the difference between the Ford Snap and the Wallace is, the Wallace was slight, a larger tractor, had more power, and it also had <coughs> overhead valves, which you can see on this head of the... Um, off of the, the other tractor that I recently purchased. So you've got overhead valves on this tractor. You've still got to lubricate them manually with an oil can before and during use. 
overhead valve. And the other interesting thing about this tractor is if you have a look, you can see the valves are clearly stamped Wallace, as in Cloudworks Wallace tractor. Whereas if we look at the other head off of the off of this tractor, well, it's staying there, I'm not going to pick it up, but they're stamped Massey Harris. So again, verifies the age of this tractor. So <coughs> the engine is quite a modern engine. It's it's a water pump engine, so it's it doesn't rely on thermocycling, unlike the Fordsons at the time, which were pure thermocycling. You can see actually, if you look in here, you can see that the tractor's had a fairly hard life at some point. You can see the wear on the timing gears. I'll just turn the engine around a bit so you can see the way they're damaged. And this is part of, you know, why <coughs> I'm not going to be doing anything with this tractor for a while because there's damage like that and the cost of having new gears made and things machined is just going to be completely prohibitive. Does it have a weight stubble scoring on it? Yeah, one thing I learned about this tractor that it had done quite a lot of work. <coughs> and over in WA, we do things slightly different to the rest of the world. And you see on the front axle, it's got like this serrated edge. And I always thought that that was just, you know, when they cut the axles out of the metal that they were using to make them, they used oxycetylene. But no, someone told me that what it is is when they're ploughing, the wheat stubble stalks are continuously rubbing against the front axle and they wear, over, over the hundreds of hours of work that they do, they actually wear grooves into the axle. And you wouldn't believe it, but there it is. Um, just whilst we've got, whilst we're talking about the overhead valve system and that, you'll notice these are currently stuck in here, that these push rods. They're fully adjustable on the end, and then to save getting flat spots on the rockers, they have ball bearings that sit in the cup, so that they continually rotate and you never end up with a flat spot. No, they weren't there when you first cracked it open, we had to look for no, them. No, they were down in the bottom of the sub and things like that. Um, yeah, another interesting thing about the Wallace tractors is on the big ends, between the big ends and the connecting rods, you have these shims, and the idea is, as the, if the track you're out there and you're ploughing with the tractor, if it develops a bit of a bottom end knock, you stop the tractor, you open up the handhold covers to the engine, take whichever cap off which is knocking, I pull a couple of shims out and put it back together to tighten up and take the knock away from. So. You know, oh, yeah. you've, got, you've got your governor there in the background. Yeah, this is this is the other thing that I find extremely interesting about the... First of all, there's the governor housing. I mean, it's a Pickering governor, so the sort of governor that you see on the steam engines and the like. This governor housing was unfortunately damaged at some point. As you can see, we've welded it back together there. Again, you know, and it's missing part of the fork that operate on the governor, but... Just the fact that it has these picker and governors on them, and you know, they work by opening up when the tractor gets up to speed, and when they open up, they push on this, um, well, this pushes on the lever in here and opens the butterfly in the carburetor to give you more fuel. Um, they're equipped with a Kingston carburetor, a large solid brass carburetor. Uh, let me choke and the butterfly is actually it's a weird system they've got a large ball ball valve in them um, the butterfly on this tractor for the carburetor is not in the carburetor itself but in the inlet manifold uh, which is down there they have a, a two twin exhaust system on them one exhaust is the main exhaust when you're running on petrol, and then once they warm up, you can blank that exhaust off, and they proceed to run through this smaller exhaust, and they run through tubes, the heat goes through tubes, which pre-warms the kerosene 
before it goes into the cylinders and helps it vaporise so that they can run on caro. They've also got a water injection system on them so to prevent ignition not. Uh, what tends to happen with these Wallaces is those tubes in there, they get pinholes in them and then they won't run properly, although fortunately I've got to swap them over, but the tubes on the manifold for this tractor are in quite good condition and there you can see the tubes so it's like a steam engine boiler and there they are running through there and there's your throttle control and there's your water injection system so <clears throat> um, as you can see on this one which is open for you, you can see that the manifold shutter is in there and you operate it by turning this which is unfortunately C solid and I've got to try and get that apart. Uh, I think I think that's time for this episode. So here yeah, they're quite an advanced tractor and hopefully within the next couple of weeks I'll have the other one in here and running. <laughs>